Good morning and welcome to the Titan Holdings PLC Interim Results Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time by the Q&A tab situated in the right-hand corner of your screen. Just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to Keith Ritchie, non-executive chair. Good morning, sir. Uh, thank you very much, and good morning to uh, to all our shareholders and investors who are who've signed up for this. Our first investor meet presentation. We're very pleased to be able to do this and to reach out to uh, to to many more uh, shareholders and investors than we've historically been able to do. Uh, and uh, and credit to the technology. Uh, and to the Investor Meet team for getting this all set up. So we're very pleased to be able to present our interim results for the six months to the 31st of March, 2023. Um, as, as you heard, I'm, I'm the non-exec chair of Titan. Uh, alongside me is Carolyn Isom, who is the chief financial officer. Um, and Carolyn is, is going to take uh, a, a large part of the presentation this morning dealing with uh, all of the operational uh, and the and financial side of the the results. Uh, I will I will deal with some of the the, the more general business uh, and market overview. Uh, but between the two of us, we can uh, we can answer. Uh, we're looking forward to answering any questions you may have. Uh, as as was explained, you can post them straight away, or we'll take them uh, post them at the end. So with. Without any further ado, Carolyn, unless you wish to add anything at this point, we'll get into the presentation. No, good to go, Keith. Okay, thank you. Right, so, uh, right, so uh, just to summarise uh, a little bit about Titan in case uh, in case you're new to, to us. Um, firstly, we're an established market player. We've been around for uh, for over 50 years now. Um, we're a leading company in the UK ventilation industry, uh, supplying ventilation and door and window products. Um, we uh, place a great emphasis on product development in the market, uh, and we, uh, we're always looking for new innovative products. Um, and we play quite a significant role in driving uh, where the market is going in terms of uh, the regulatory developments um, I, I sit on the trade association bodies alongside one of my non-exec colleagues, uh, and we're fully plugged into what is what is happening there. Um, so the uh, and, and the regulation is key to Titan. Um, building regulations and the standards that uh, sit alongside those uh, are, are important in in driving the demand for for ventilation, both in uh, in in new build and also in refurbishment, um, and uh, and that is it's important to understand that it is very much based on what the regulations say. Uh, if if you didn't have regulations, uh, nobody would fit ventilation, and there would be uh, there would be a major health issue uh, caused as a result of that. So uh, it, it is important that you understand that regulations are are, are key to Titan, uh, both in the UK and uh, and Europe. Um, so um, the, the increasing focus on uh, indoor air quality that's been driven uh, by COVID is, uh, is a really important factor to bear in mind. Um, you know, it, it's the first time that in, in really the public domain here in the UK that, uh, that ventilation has been, has been considered. And when government is talking about it, you know that you're on the, the agenda, um, particularly with COVID. But as we go into uh, more, Energy efficiency, uh, which is obviously key to the to the net zero debate, uh, it is vital that buildings are properly ventilated, and that's that's our business. So we have a diversified global footprint and revenue streams. You know, we sell into uh, mainly the UK, but the European market is very important for us. South Korea, uh, we'll come on and talk about that in a bit more, and we also sell into the US. So. We, we, we've certainly got a, a good uh, international coverage and we've got a, a, quite a wide range of products going into those markets, both, both the natural and the uh, mechanical ventilation markets, as well as we sell window and door hardware, 
uh, which we've always sold um, to the to the window and door fabricators. So from a, uh, a, a marketing uh, and product range perspective, as I've already mentioned, we've got a strong investment in uh, in R and D to make sure we always offer uh, good leading market leading products. Um, and you know, we our products have been uh, awarded some uh, some some of the trade awards recently, um, which we're always very pleased to do that they have done. We we look to to compete against our um, uh, against the other mar uh, companies in the ventilation space by bringing out innovative products and, uh, and, and beating them at it. And we've always got a, a, a pretty good pipeline of products that we're looking to introduce. So, so that's a, a strength uh, as long, alongside the balance sheet. Um, we've got positive cash, no borrowings, uh, net assets as of the last, last date of 15 million. So moving on to the business overview. Uh, the executive team, as you know, uh, we have a vacancy for our CEO, and I'm sure there'll be a question about that at the, uh, the end of the session. Uh, uh, we, we've, we've shown the, the senior leadership team on this slide, led by Carolyn, uh, alongside our operations director, new commercial director who joined this week, uh, our technical director, and then uh, Tyson Anderson, the, the business projects director. Um, uh, they are a very competent group of individuals, and I'm very confident that they will uh, do a great job for us as we go forward uh, in the interim while we're, while we're recruiting a new CEO. As I said uh, in, in the introduction, uh, it is a diverse business, two distinct product streams being the window and door hardware side, side and the ventilation system side, which deals with the with the mechanical ventilation products that we make and uh, and sell. Uh, you can see that set out in the left-hand box under Titan Hardware, which is the main operating subsidiary in the UK. Uh, that is the manufacturer and the seller of all of our products in the UK and Europe. Uh, Titan Hardware also manufactures all the products that we sell into the US, where we have a small subsidiary. Um, that uh, sells to very limited uh, parts of the US, uh, which, which require trickle vents. Uh, we haven't um, been able to, at this stage, expand it in selling mechanical products. Uh, that's a, a big investment for us, uh, and we haven't, we haven't done that yet. And then we come on to, to Korea, where we have two entities that we've invested in through a, a joint venture agreement. We have 51% uh, of a company called Titan Korea, uh, and then 49% of a company called Brown Tech Sales. We consolidate Titan Career. It's a subsidiary of ours. So we bring in 100% uh, of their revenues into our top line sales number. Um, and we bring in all of their profits uh, and losses. Uh, and then the associate, which, uh, which buys all of its products from Titan Career, uh, then sells out into the marketplace. Uh, that is, not consolidated in the in the Titan account, we just bring in our share of the um, of the of the net profit after tax into our accounts. Um, that company has again quite strong asset backing, uh, and we we show the the, the headline uh, figures in our annual report if anybody's interested. So that's just a, a very run quick run through of the, of the Titan Group. So products already stressed how important this is to us. Uh, mechanical ventilation products. Uh, we've pictured here some of the, 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 key, the key items. And I, I do want to highlight the Titan Farsafe Air Brick, which is something we brought out as a result of the, uh, the Grenfell tragedy uh, five years ago now, um, 2017. Uh, uh, that is a metal air brick, uh, which is designed to go into uh, high rise buildings. Uh, and if uh, heaven forbid there is another fire uh, like Renfro. Uh, anything on the outside of a building that's plastic will burn and will melt. Uh, the metal air brick is, 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 is designed um, um, to ensure that it doesn't uh, have that, uh, that jeopardy. Uh, and we've, we've continued to see good sales of that uh, into the domestic, uh, re uh, the residential building market. 
And the Titan Ultimate DMEV is a is a new product for us. Well, we've been we've been making and selling it for over two years now. Um, again, that market leading uh, designed. Uh, it, it's a constantly running fan that, that boosts uh, when uh, moisture uh, uh, is is created in in a wet room or in a bathroom or in a kitchen, and then it ramps up and extracts uh, at a at a high rate. Uh, and the reason why that is of interest is because um, there are a vast number of small fans which have been sold and fitted into into the UK market, which do not uh, provide necessary or sufficient performance to actually expel moisture. Um, you know, that's a, a failure of the market. Um, but the the regulator has has upgraded the the standards for these these um, for these products and. Uh, our fan is when, when it was launched. There were only there was only one other fan in the marketplace that uh, that could do what this this could what the ultimate fan could do. So we're we're pleased about that, and we're seeing good levels of sales of that one now. And then in the uh, ventilation and hardware products, uh, just just shown some of the some of the items that we we manufacture uh, and buy in. Uh, the the trim vent select is one of our original trickle vents. Um, the SF extra vent is a, a new a metal vent that we bought out about uh, seven or eight years ago that, that is good stellar. Then you can see a couple of the products that we buy in, uh, a friction hinge, which goes into a, a window, and then the Asterian door cylinder, which is a product we've developed and, uh, and enhanced in the last uh, three or four years, or a couple of years, which is a, a security-led product, um, uh, goes into the UK market, and we've, we've seen good sales. Though. So there's a a snapshot of the kind of products that we're selling, um, and I've passed over the uh, the MVHR range. That's the the key. That, that that's a key part of the range in the mechanical ventilation space. But you know, I just wanted to highlight some of the newer items that we've been selling um, or developing and selling over the years. But the MVHR range is 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 crucial to our business as well. So product highlights in 2023. Uh, I've talked about the uh, the air bricks. Uh, I've talked about the uh, Titan Ultimate DMEV. Uh, I've highlighted the Asterian, uh, uh, Asterian two three-star high security anti-manipulation profile cylinder, and then just worth also highlighting uh, some of the uh, the work we've been doing on controllers. Um, you know, all of our mechanical ventilation products uh, uh, are now capable of being managed. Through, um, through a Wi-Fi connection. So you can be anywhere in the world with a Wi-Fi connection and you can control your ventilation, your MVHR, um, uh, turn it up, turn it down, uh, see what's going on, see what the temperatures are. Um, uh, and, and that's, a, a, you know, there's, we're convinced um, and we've seen it with lots of other products that uh, having that connectivity is uh, and being able to control the ventilation is is critical um, in the in the digital world. Um, we are working with uh, with customers uh, to develop um, interface with building control systems, uh, and that will enable building owners to monitor the entire site uh, for maintenance and fault detection purposes as well. Um, so. We spend a lot of time um, on electronics, uh, and that's that. That will continue going forward. And then finally, on this slide, um, we're just bringing out uh, a new uh, new product, um, which uh, which we call the HRV4, uh, which will which will enable us to replace uh, a couple of our older products um, with better quality, better levels of performance. Um, and uh, and that's a product that we're being launching in the next uh, the next uh, month or so. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the UK and Europe overview. Um, hopefully, uh, if you've if you've read our uh, annual report, a lot of this a lot of this fact is in there as well. As I said earlier, the window and door hardware uh, what is the, is one division, and then ventilation systems is the other. Um, I've listed the products out there that we that we sell in that. The markets, just worth flagging that, um, window and door hardware goes into uh, residential 
new build and the repairs, maintenance and improvements sectors. Um, and we also sell some products into the commercial new build market. Ventilation systems, we're focused on the UK and European residential new build markets uh, under building regulations. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and the route to market for both of those ventilation systems, uh, we sell direct to the, to the house builders via their contractors. Um, and in Europe, we sell via uh, distributors. Uh, for the window and door hardware market, uh, we sell to the window and door fabricators in the UK. So two distinct routes to market there. Um, and in the, uh, in, in the last set of results, we sold just under, half, uh, just under five million pounds in the window and door hardware section, uh, and just five and a half million pounds in the ventilation systems section. So that's the first time actually that that vent systems has exceeded the window and door hardware part of the market. So just moving on to the market overview, and again, I'm not going to spend too long on this, but there are a number of different ways that you can ventilate your property. Um, if we start on the right hand side with mechanical ventilation with heat recovery, that's where the bulk of our value goes. Uh, buying a unit like this, um, uh, it, it, the, the, the selling price uh, for the, even the smallest of those units is, is uh, I think about £500 and going up to well over £1,000 for the largest units. So that's where in terms of our sales, we get the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, value, um, biggest amount of sales. Uh, that is a whole house system. You install it in, um, in, a, in, in, the, in the roof space or in a utility cupboard, and then you, you um, extract um, moisture, uh, 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 volatile organic compounds, whatever the dirty, wherever the dirty air is from the wet rooms, and you supply clean air into the into the living rooms, uh, both the bedrooms and uh, and then the uh, the living area downstairs. Uh, moving to the left, continuous mechanical extract ventilation. Again, it's a box in the uh, in the roof space that is extracting only from the, uh, the the wet rooms. And the distinction between those two is that with mechanical ventilation with heat recovery, what you're doing is you're actually recovering the the warm air that you've uh, that you've spent your money on heating um, and you, you you can benefit from about 90% of that energy you can recover that through through MVHR uh, with with centralized mechanical extract uh, you don't recover the energy you're just uh, you're just um, extracting that that air to the outside um, it's a cheaper system uh, rather uh, compared to MVHR um, but it is one that is accredited under uh, Part F of the building regulations. Uh, moving to the left, uh, the decentralized uh, mechanical extract. Uh, these are small fans, as you can see, there's a big distinction between the, the, the ultimate uh, DMEV and the mechanical extract ventilation or centralized MEV. These go into individual wet rooms so that so in, a, in, in this property, we'll, there'll be a, uh, a fan in uh, the, the, the bathrooms upstairs, uh, a kitchen downstairs or a cloakroom downstairs. So they're, they're easier to fit. Um, it's not a whole house system. Uh, and that's, that's a, a development which we're seeing a lot more of in the UK and also into the refurbishment world. And then finally on this slide, uh, we've got the, the traditional market, which was trickle vents in the windows uh, and intermittent extract fans. Uh, and, and that's a, a market which in new builds certainly we're seeing uh, movement away from due to the regulations requiring a, a higher standard of, of ventilation than, than that provides. So as I said, building regulations are pretty important to us. Um, the three main types I've already talked about, natural ventilation, continuous mechanical ventilation, and then mechanical ventilation with heat recovery. And I'm not going to spend any more time on that. Uh, if anybody's interested, no doubt they'll ask. In terms of the market size, um, of course, there's been uh, a lot of uh, debate recently about the UK economy. 
and we flagged that in the re in the report um, that uh, the most recent forecasts have been quite quite bearish on uh, house building, new house building uh, in the in the UK uh, in the next uh, next or well, certainly in 2023. Uh, we've actually shown the uh, the forecast from Experian going out to uh, to 2024 2025. Um, they're not as bearish as the Construction Products Association, uh, which I also flagged in the interim report. But they both yeah, they both of them see a, a dip in um, in both uh, new build and RMNI uh, in the next uh, in 2023, um, yeah, which is uh, which of course impacts our business. So that covers very quickly the uh, the market overview uh, and, a, and a kind of introduction to to Titan. Um, so we'll now pass move on to the short term business focus, and I'm going to hand over to uh, to Carolyn to, to 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 cover these this part of the presentation. So Carolyn, over to you. Thank you, Keith, and um, good morning all. Um, as we documented at the beginning of this financial year and in our interim report, we had identified our short-term focus areas for 2023 um, to return us back to profitability. One of the key things in doing that is the senior leadership team got together and put together all of the um, key areas that we would need to focus on as a business. Um, we call them business imperatives and I'll come on to those um, in a minute as we have a separate slide. The next thing was margin improvement. We flagged in our 20, 2022 report that we had been unable to pass um, cost increases quickly enough onto our customers. Um, we've now got processes in place to make sure that we stay on top of that now. So we are on the road to recovering margin. We're also going through a, a project of rationalizing our product range. We also have strength for our supply and management policies. And we're also still looking at our higher value products um, like the Titan Firesafe Air Brick. Third one was market penetration, and I won't go too much into that. He's covered a lot of that. Um, but with that, we have introduced a new commercial director. As Keith mentioned earlier, he started this week, and that will assist us in our strategy in terms of that market penetration that strengthened our whole sales area. We also introduced the new operations director in November. He's settled in very well and is making a big impact um, in the factory here. And another thing is streamlining the corporate structure and the operations of Korea. And I'm sure we'll get some questions on that at the end, but we are looking to do that um, and take some cost out of that business and also just simplify um, that area of the business. And the fifth item was reviewing the business and the growth strategy. Um, and we had made um, a promise to shareholders that that would be on our agenda and that we would look to get to that by the end of 2023. So it's coming on to business imperatives, which I mentioned. Um, so we had key eight key areas that we were going to focus on this year. They're the areas that we knew that we needed to focus on to bring the business back to profitability. That's what we're all here for, after all. Um, and a lot of progress has been made in most of those areas. Most notably, probably the production operations, one shown in blue on the right there. We were in a catchback situation. We had a backlog of customer orders. We've, we've been quite transparent um, in our two last reports about that. Not just because of the supply chain issues, but the introduction of our ERP system. We did have a huge backlog of orders, which, which thankfully are now up to date. We are um, back to normal. Um, we have finished good stock and we have good lead times to kind of return to those high levels of customer service um, levels. So just coming on to the other side, this lists the business imperatives in detail. I won't go through every single one. The good thing is the senior leadership team now is at full strength by the vacant um, CEO position, but we carry on aiming to, to um, achieve all of these. By the end of financial year, we remain committed to do so. There's been a lot of progress in all areas. As I say, the biggest one was catching back on those arrears, which then really frees up the business to focus on other areas. 
Um, the second one um, we get asked a lot about, so improving our working capital uh, and ultimately reducing inventory. We do hold high levels of inventory and they have grown up, uh, up over the last two years. Part of that was strategic, we hold a high level of raw materials um, that comprise uh, key components that we had issues with um, when we had the supply chain shortage last year. But we do recognise that that's cash tied up. Um, so there are a lot of internal initiatives to, to reduce those stock levels and that's ongoing. Um, third one was to achieve a stable, engaged, present workforce. Again, lots of progress in that area. A real focus on staff. We've reduced our staff turnover levels. We now have a stable senior leadership team, which was, was pretty key. Um, and we're implementing different people initiatives within the business. Um, the fourth was recognising business benefits from our new system. It did cause us um, some issues last year, but we recognise that actually we now have the opportunity to use that system and to improve our efficiencies um, and improve margins um, and introduce that level of automation within the business so that we have better data, quicker information. Um, so that's ongoing and we've, we've introduced... Um, Power BI into the business, which has been very helpful, um, and automated workflows, those types of things. Um, deliver innovative new products to drive business growth. Again, to keep touched on that, we've got an ongoing commitment to new products, um, and we're always releasing um, new products um, every year, and they tend to have very big success when they enter the market, so we'll continue to do that. Um, we're showing them at exhibitions. We attended ISH in um, Germany last month, which was really successful and gives us that um, platform to show the market what we've what we've achieved. Improve profitability and margin through hardware product range rationalization. So on the window and door hardware side, we did recognize that we had um, a very large um, product offering. We have undergone a full review of that and we are in the process of finalizing that plan to reduce the number of SKUs. We had a very large number of SKUs um, and, and we recognize that having that many um, probably hinders our efficiency so we're working towards that and hopefully the commercial director will get very heavily involved in that as well. Um, developing the strong sales pipeline through existing new customers, that's um, ongoing and always remains a focus. Um, again, strengthening those sales and um, customer service teams has been quite key this year. Again, bringing the commercial director in and we brought a customer service manager in, which we've not had before as well. And we're currently undergoing um, a review of CRM as we look to um, integrate that with Microsoft D365, which again will just broaden um, the data that's available to all, so it should help make decisions. Um, and improve workplace safety by reducing workplace incidents. Now, that by no means means that we had an issue with workplace incidents. We absolutely didn't. Um, but what we wanted to do was change the health and safety culture. And again, we've, we're, we're recruiting a, an EHS manager at the moment, but we've had a very strong um, interim in place. And he's made a lot of changes in terms of our um, compliance um, and changing that culture, which has been very successful. So I think it's fair to say, I mean, there's there's eight focuses there, but we are well underway um, in achieving those and, and having that impact on the business. So financials and then the current trading and outlook. Um, you would have all seen our um, RNS last week in our interim statement. Um, this table here shows the comparative of the six months to March 23 against the six months to March 22 and the percentage change. Um, Group revenue actually rose by 5.2% due to the stronger trading in the UK and Europe, which was slightly ahead of our expectations. Part of that was um, due to us catching up um, on all our back, um, all our backlog orders. Um, so that put us in a really good position. Um, EBITDA <laughs> reduced slightly, reflecting our lower gross margins against last year. We again we We've highly publicised um, the issues we've had on margin, um, labour costs, material costs, energy costs, inflation, all of the, the same issues that most businesses are, are facing. Um, but I'm sure you can appreciate when you're in a backlog um, position, it's quite difficult to, to pass price increases on to customers. But as I said earlier, 
that's something that's under review and we have um, put price price increases on um, in this financial year. Um, loss before tax, <clears throat> 450,000 loss against 250,000 loss last year. Again, a lot of that was due to our business in Korea. Um, UK actually were, was slightly ahead of expectation, but Korea fell short, hence the um, RNS last uh, last week actually indicated to the market that this year um, we were behind um, where we wanted to be, where we had forecast to be. Cash balance, um, 1.6 million at the end of um, March against 1.7 end of September. Um, and we had received a dividend uh, from the group's associate brown tech sales, um, amounted to 291,000, which was good. And the board approved an interim dividend of half a pence per share, um, which will be paid to shareholders on the 7th of July. So financial summary, so cash flow and balance sheet. So although the net assets had slightly decreased um, to 15.4 million from 16, we still have a strong balance sheet. We have no borrowings um, at all. Net cash had slightly decreased, um, which was equivalent to 10.4% of net assets, but cash continues to, be, uh, to remain at a stable level. Cash generated operations was slightly up, um, primarily due to actively improving our work and capital management. Um, and we are targeting those reductions in stock levels for the main product lines. Inventory is 6.9 million, so slightly up on September 22. Um, we had invested 250,000 in um, capital expenditure, which was mainly on tooling um, in our factory. And as mentioned before, we received a dividend in March for 291,000 um, from our associate company. Um, Dividend of half a pence, which I mentioned. Um, net current assets were 8 million with a quick ratio of 1.23. Um, a return on capital employed was a loss of 5.9% with the business continuing to operate in challenging trading conditions um, against last year, loss of 3.7%. I won't cover off all of this slide, but this is just highlighting what Keith mentioned before in terms of the segment and the analysis. In the window and door hardware division, um, revenue was lower by 12%. Um, and ventilation systems had increased by 31%. And, and a lot of that was from our, our sales to the export market, so Europe, um, as we um, cleared that backlog. And also, we've had some of our new products um, achieving good sales. Uh, for example, the Titan Ultimate DMEV van, which has grown by more than four times um, in the in the last period. So current trading and outlook, look, we remain confident in the prospects of the group. We've made very good progress on all of our business imperatives and we remain focused on bringing, on bringing the group back to profit. Um, Keith touched on um, some of the market outlook things earlier on. Um, you know, and we still have a, a high quality range of products um, that in the market currently, but also an exciting pipeline of new products, um, including the HRV4, which is launching um, in June. Um, we expect that the second half for UK and Europe will be slightly lower than H1 as, as the market slows down. Um, but we expect that in Korea, the trading conditions will remain very difficult and the losses will continue, hence the, the change in forecast that we, that we announced last week um, and there is a strong focus at board level to streamline that corporate structure um, and, and introduce more rigorous controls but we do continue have a to have a strong balance sheet so we have Keith shall I hand back to you yes thank you Carolyn for that uh, very uh, rigorous run through of, uh, mm -hmm. of of where we stand today and and the last couple of slides just so that uh, everybody's aware just uh, uh, the identities of the, uh, the the six directors on the titan holdings board um, that uh, uh, that are managing uh, the business uh, i put them there they're on our website so we're always very transparent about that uh, background on uh, on on the non-exec directors 
uh, which is, I think, uh, important. And then finally, uh, just the the latest um, uh, just latest details on the uh, on the shareholdings, which you know who exceed three percent. Uh, as you know, Harvard Capital are now our largest uh, institutional shareholder and largest shareholder throughout now, only just under 20% of the company. Uh, John Anderson, the company founder, he and his uh, his wife uh, continue to own over 15% of the, of the company. Um, uh, my my shareholdings up there, along along again with my wife's shareholding. Uh, Tyson, uh, John Anderson's son, uh, holds just under 700,000 shares. Um, uh, and then Amanda Farah uh, and David Barry are the, the, the last two who own over 3%. So again, we're always very transparent about that. We have to disclose these these uh, these shareholdings whenever uh, there is uh, changes in those over and above 3%. Uh, they are flagged. Uh, so there's no, um, no, um, there's every, all, all visibility on that is is clear. So, just to run that out, and uh, uh, and again, you've got our contact details, uh, both mine and Carolyn's. They're on the website. Uh, we're always available. Uh, I'm always very happy to uh, to speak to shareholders to answer your questions uh, and to uh, uh, and, and to and to hope that you remain um, very keen and uh, and interested in in, in Titan. So thank you for that, for your attendance, if your attention on that one. Um, and I think we're now ready to take some Q&A. So Keith, so Caroline. Back to Alessandro, yeah. Perfect. Keith, Caroline, thank you very much for your presentation. What I'll do is I'll just bring your cameras back up. Ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just by using the Q&A tab, which is situated on the top right hand corner of your screen. But just while the company take a few moments to review those questions that have been submitted today, I'd just like to remind you that recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your investor dashboard. As you can see, we received a number of questions throughout today's presentation. And Keith, if I could just hand back to you just to read out those questions where it's appropriate to do so, I'll pick up from you at the end. Right, and Alessandro, I can't see the questions in front of me. So on the right-hand side, can you see chat, Q&A and polls, Keith? Yeah, yeah. If you click on the Q&A, the questions will yeah. be in there, sir. Yeah, and I'm clicking on that and I can't see anything. If you click on the new, so that... No, I've just got an old one up oh, there. I've one got the them, would you like me to... Okay, yeah, if you, if you can see them, I can't see them at the minute. So. Okay, um, we have a question um, which says, can we comment on the current situation regarding availability of components? Um, I think the short answer to that is the, the supply chain shortages um, that we experienced last year have, have pretty much gone away. We've got a few key components that remain on long lead times, but we do have stocks of those. Um, Keith, do you want to make any other comment on that? No, I think that covers it. Um, yeah, supply chain has been a real issue for us over the last couple of years, as you know. Um, you know, when the the supply of motors uh, goes out from kind of four weeks availability to uh, you know to, to six months and uh, and longer, uh, and we're now being required to to put our orders in uh, for the for the whole of 2023 and 2024. Uh, you'll understand that actually that's that has uh, has been a uh, a big impediment to us over the last couple of years uh, in terms of managing those high value items. So uh, it, it it's it's been hard, been very hard. But we are in a it, we're in a better place than we were this time a year ago. Yeah, and and almost linking to that, um, we've also been asked. Um, we built up inventory during the last financial year at the expense of cash. And it was the understanding that it would unwind. However, it's continued to grow in the first half. Is this goal proving more problematic than anticipated? Um, I think it's fair to say, you know, it is, it is more problematic. It's very difficult when you have high levels of stock um, and high lead times on some items to bring those levels down. As I mentioned earlier, a high value of stock um, is in relation to raw materials and it is those higher value items that are difficult um, to get at short notice. Um, but we also have 
introduce quite a lot of internal processes to start bringing inventory down, a lot more automation, a lot more um, clearer forecasting. So we are hoping that that starts to unwind by the end of financial year. Caroline, I think there was a question posted at the outset uh, before we started on the uh, on the recruitment of the CEO uh, and the process. Do you want just want to, to to read that one out, please? Um, yeah. So we were asked, having had two CEOs in short order, can the board <clears> take their time in appointment for the next one and ensure the next one fits with company culture? Um, could there be a candidate already working for the company who would fit better um, with the company? culture um, and someone else linked to that actually said what qualities are we looking for um, from the new CEO yeah. that, that perhaps wasn't present before okay and 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 and, and it's a it's a great question um, uh, the we, we've we've adopted uh, we've used uh, uh, a recruitment uh, a search team uh, based in uh, based in East Anglia uh, that has uh, a really good uh, client list uh, in the in the region, uh, and we've used them uh, quite a few times now uh, for our senior recruitment, including Carolyn herself, uh, our, our the, the two new the two Neds who joined us last year, uh, and both of the previous two chief executives. Um, uh, and we've been through the process. You know, we we went through um, long list, short lists interview candidates, uh, brought them to full board, full board uh, where they made presentations and we and we selected on the basis of the of choosing the best candidate that we could at the time. Um, so we, we absolutely have not uh, you know, shortcut any part of that process. Uh, I, I, we, we've been on we, we've been a tad unlucky. Um, I'm not going to hide that. Uh, but we've we've adopted the the, exactly the same process this time around. You know, we go through rigorous interviews, um, we psychometric test our candidates, and we select on that basis. And that's uh, it, that, that's what we will, we are doing this time around. The process started. Um, we have set a uh, a very clear criteria for the candidates uh, in terms of what we expect them to bring. To Titan, um, we've emphasized that, uh, that the teamwork is is a critical part of what we expect the the, the candidates to to bring to to Titan, because it's a key feature that uh, of Titan itself. Um, having a, a strong team ethic um, is really really important to us, um, and we've you know we we've stressed that in there, and we. I think we've you know, the, the other ingredient that I, I want to just highlight is uh, you know we we want we we want somebody who can develop individuals develop the team as well and that requires somebody who who does show a high level of EQ as well as obviously IQ um, so you know we've stressed that and and that's the and that's the basis on which we will be looking at candidates going forward now the second part of that question was terms of any internal candidates uh, I've always encouraged um, my colleagues uh, if they feel they've um, th that they have the capabilities to apply um, uh, uh, that we, we didn't select on that basis uh, in the in the first first cup in in the first round that we did um, uh, in terms of this process uh, I've made the same point to my colleagues that if anybody wishes to apply then of course they'd be they'd be considered and and as uh, uh, a candidate who comes from the from titan already they clearly know the culture they know the background uh, and that would stand them in 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 very good stead uh, against uh, external candidates if they so choose to do so so absolutely they're encouraged to apply okay um we have a question around um, the loss of the Sabinco relationship um, is identified as being considerable and they are wanting to know whether there's moves to establish another similar relationship with companies here and abroad. 
Yeah, and again, we flagged we flagged that over the last couple of reports. Yeah, so Binko uh, is a uh, large uh, Belgium hardware manufacturer that sells sells product into the commercial uh, commercial building market. Um, so uh, office blocks, university um, buildings, hospitals uh, is that is the market for for their products. And uh, we had a, we had a, an exclusive distributor relationship with them in the UK. So we were responsible for all their distribution in the UK uh, for many, many years. Uh, they uh, over time, they had um, just they had they had uh, in their in their export market. So outside Belgium, uh, they had moved from using distributors to selling direct, so they'd set up subsidiaries and were selling direct to customers on that basis. And you can appreciate that that cuts out a margin. Um, and they finally got round to taking the same decision in respect to the UK market, which we were very sorry about having had a, a long standing relationship with them. Um, it, it came to an end, um, you know, we parted am amicably. Uh, and, and we're now in a position where we're developing new products to replace those Sabinco products. And we also have a relationship with another um, European hardware manufacturer called Roto, uh, which has got uh, a, a wide range of products, both for the commercial and also the residential market. Um, you know, we've, we've got to know them over the last few years anyway. Uh, they've, we, you know, we've talked to them on a pretty regular basis uh, and we're just setting up to to now supply their products as well. So yes, yes, we're we're, we're trying to replace the Binko. It won't happen immediately. That the that the, the amount of revenue that we earn from Sabinco will be replaced uh, straight away. But over time, yeah, we are looking to bring in alternative sources of hardware. Um, and an interesting question on um, Korea. Um, they ask if the Korean market is moving to mechanical ventilation. Why are Titan not selling their mechanical ventilation products into Korea? Yeah, and that is a good question. Um, and, and the answer to that is that the two markets are, are really separate in terms of the, the products that can go into, uh, you know, that we sell into the UK and sell into Korea. The, the Korean market, the, the, the mechanical ventilation with heat recovery is a much, much, uh, is a lower quality, much cheaper product than we sell in the UK or indeed into Europe. And that's down to standards. Um, you know, the requirements in the UK for, um, uh, for heat recovery, for energy use uh, are, are much higher than, uh, than they are currently in Korea. So yeah, you could buy a, a, an MVHR unit for maybe $150, $200 in, in Korea. We've got no chance of, of selling our products at that kind of level. So. So it's not a it's not possible just to sell um, you know, transfer our products into into Korea and, and sell them. Um, they just they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't sell. Um, and, and what that means then in terms of our strategy there is that we have to look at or we are looking at, at high value um, high value products that we can sell there. Um, and there is you know, there are uh, elements of the Korean building regulations where we have, uh, which we have identified where we can combine both our natural ventilation products and mechanical ventilation products. Uh, and that is, and that is what we are, uh, that's what we are moving towards. It's taken longer than we, than we hoped it would. Um, but, you know, the, the you know, we, we, we are, we are hopeful um, of seeing progress um, in selling products uh, into the mechanical ventilation um, business uh, in, in the next, over the next year or so. But I'm not going to make any promises on that one at this stage. Um, so I hope that's answered the question. Um, and we have a new shareholder asking if we can give an idea in scale um, in terms of number of employees, locations we operate from and geographically where we derive our revenue. I'm hoping that the presentation has covered off that geographical um, part. But in terms of number of employees, we've got around 23 in Korea, um, one sales director who operates out of Europe, one sales manager in the US and about 180 in the UK. Good. 
Um, Anything else? Yeah, I think just one more. Um, we've been asked why we have been unable to pass on cost increases um, by pricing and what's been done to rectify it um, so we can cope with a high inflation environment. Um, and I think I covered part of that earlier. Um, due to the situation we were in in terms of backlog, it was very difficult to get the balance right in terms of passing those increases on to customers. Um, we did have um, a number of fixed price contracts as well, um, which we've reduced um, going forward. But we've, in, again, introduced quite a lot of um, internal processes to make sure that margin is reviewed regularly um, and any cost increases that we receive are passed on. You know, and couple that with looking at internal efficiencies as well, so it doesn't all have to be cost related. Do you want to add anything to that, Keith? No, I, I think it's. I think that's that, that's pretty pretty accurate. Um, yeah, just to emphasise the point, you know, when you you know the, when you owe a customer um, product um, because you're behind, it's actually very very difficult at that point to go along and say oh and by the way there's a 10 percent price increase as well um so we have had some resistance from customers and that understandably uh we're over that now um and you know, price increases are are back on the you know back in our uh, ability uh yeah but it's competitive i think it's fair to say um final question has the new IT system been fully and successfully implemented with the replacement or bolstering of an IT team to keep the system maintained and progressing while reducing costs associated with the introduction of this system? Will ongoing training be offered to each user to properly benefit from the data generated and to assist with holding or reducing stock levels um, related to what was mentioned earlier? Um, yes, it's been fully and successfully implemented we are over all the initial hurdles that we have that mo you know most companies experience with an introduction of a new ERP um, we're, we're over that now it's being um, it is being maintained we have an agreement with um, a d365 consultant um, have an SLA with them and they are looking at um, helping us optimize that system now. So day to day, it does its job. Um, we can, you know, do everything finance related, dispatch production. Um, but now we're looking to optimize it because there are ways that we can gain efficiencies by using the system better. We are currently looking at super user training. Um, so we are looking to um, increase uh, the training of our, our end users, which will get again help going forward. Um, and in relation to the specific point on stock levels. Um, yes, we're using the system now to optimise those stock levels as well. So a lot of the data is being cleansed in terms of like minimum order quantities, um, lead times, um, and linking that with our forecast data as well, so that we can we can manage those stock levels. So yeah, lots lots going on, but we're we're fully aware that we can use the IT system now to our benefit and and reap the rewards of you know having gone through the pain of implementing it. We want to get that benefit back now. And I think that was our final one. Yeah, perfect. Keith, Carolyn, thank you very much for that. And I think you've addressed those questions you come from investors. And of course, the company will review all questions submitted today and will publish those responses on the Investor Meet company platform. But just before redirecting investors, provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to the company. Keith, could I just ask you for a few closing comments? Yes. Um, uh, thank you all for uh, for joining us this morning. Uh, as I said at the top, um, it's it's really good to have this facility, uh, uh, this platform to be able to to meet you, uh, to to hear some of your questions. Uh, as I said, we're we're very open to your comments and questions. We recognise that uh, we're running the business; it's your business. Uh, uh, you own it, uh, and and we want to do the best we can for you, uh, and obviously ourselves as shareholders. So. Uh, very pleased to be able to do this this morning. We will repeat the exercise uh, in, in the future for our other uh, reporting. Um, I, I note that it's also possible to do this for AGMs and we'll investigate doing that for, for, for that uh, for next year. But again, uh, to, to finish, thank you for joining us uh, and we look forward to, uh, to seeing you again. Thank you very much indeed.
Thank and you. thanks, Carolyn. And thanks, Carolyn, for, for all your contribution on this as well. Keith, Carolyn, thanks once again for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close the session? I do now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Titan Holdings PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation and good morning to you all.